What's going on guys and welcome back to 10 minute tutorials. So we're going to try and keep this quick. We have SQL fiddle here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to teach you guys how to create a database so that way you can check username and passwords versus the database. So if you're creating an application with a log on or something like that, um, or even a script that you have to log in to use, um, you can actually make it check a database that you host. So that way you're not, uh, you're not having it sitting in the source code, the username and password, which a lot of people do when they first begin scripting. Okay, so this is basic SQL commands. Um, if you guys have never used SQL Fiddle, check it out. It lets you just build stuff on here and then um, run SQL commands against it and then it clears it out. So it's just a way, quick tool. Now, first thing we have to do, we have to create table. Now we're just gonna name this one users, okay? So when we do this, this is going to be where your user's information is. So we're just going to have a couple of different things. We're going to say ID. So the user needs to have an ID and that's going to be an integer. Now it's important that you specify what value type, because if you don't, people can do SQL injections and things like that, where they can type in whatever they want in that, in that variable field. Okay. So now then we're going to say first name, we need their first name and we need this to be, whoops, we need this to be variable characters. And you can make this whatever you want, but I figure your first name is not going to be more than 15 um, characters. Then we want last name. And we want the same thing. Variable characters. 15 characters is fine. Okay, and then we're going to do email. Now, you don't have to do email, but most people, when they log in or when they sign up for something, they're going to get their email. So we'll make this one a little longer. We'll give them 30 for that one. And you don't want to give them too many because, again, that enables um, different types of things that you can uh, security vulnerabilities. So then we want to go ahead and add the username and the username can be whatever you want. We'll just keep it at 15. And then, so here, here's where you don't have, if you guys don't understand SQL, you might not understand this, but we're going to have to add a primary key. Okay. So the primary key is going to be the ID. So what's this do? The primary key basically says, this has to be unique every single time. So when I reference something in the in the database, it goes to that. So it's a relational database, meaning it relates to each other. The primary key makes it make sure there's a unique variable that it can relate to. Now the first name, last name, email, username, ID, those are all variables that I'm naming. You can name them whatever you want. You can put whatever you want in those. You don't have to put first name. You don't have to put last name. You can name this just last. You can name it John. You can name it whatever you want. It's just a variable, meaning that when I reference it, I'm going to use that name again. Okay, so there's the user table that we created. So now we're going to go ahead, whoops, create. And this is going to be our table passwords. Okay, now you want them separate just in case somebody gets access to it. Um, but they're... And for those of you that have used SQL pretty in depth, you know that I'm not doing necessarily, you'll just notice that I'm not doing everything perfect in the sense that um, I'm just showing simple simplicity over um, actual database code, I guess, if you will. So you'll see what I mean. Um, so now we're going to create the passwords and here we're going to go ahead and put the same ID in there. And you'll see that this is going to be um, basically it's going to reference the other. So, and then we're going to say user, pass so this is the password and we want variable characters and this one we'll just give it 20 perfect okay and then here you're gonna see i'm gonna reference if i can type foreign key okay and i'm gonna make that foreign key the id okay and then it's gonna say references and then we're gonna say users which is the table up top that we just created id okay so what i just did is I made that foreign key. So when you insert the, these characters, this ID, it will be the same as this ID. They will reference each other. So now when I say, give me user number one, it's the same user's password down here that's related to the username up here, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, you may need to brush up on some SQL stuff, but for the most part, I'm just showing you guys the basic commands so that way you guys can do this in under 10 minutes and build your database enough to get usernames and passwords in there. Okay, so now when you have the tables that you need, so we'll build schema to make sure that there's no errors, no errors, perfect. Now what you wanna do is when you start building your code, when you start building a program, when someone goes ahead, let's say you're doing a bash script or something and someone 
creates a username and a password. You want to insert them into this table. Now, you wouldn't normally do this in the same code right here, but because I'm using SQL Fiddle and it doesn't save the database every time I build it, it does it for me. So I'm gonna do it here, insert, and I'm gonna say insert into users first because we need to put usernames first. So when we put insert into users, we're gonna say values. Now, you notice the values are ID, first name, last name, email, username, and primary key. You can actually specify right here. You could say, I only wanna put first name, whoops, first name, and last name, right? I could do that and then just put the first name and last name down here in values, but I don't wanna do that. I wanna put all of them. So we just leave that blank and then it'll look for all of them. So ID, we're gonna go ahead and put one for the ID. The first name, we'll put uh, Zach because that's my name. And then last name, we'll put Stuffy. And then email, so not, mind you, I'm not paying attention. These all have to be in quotes because they are um, characters. Now, email, we'll just say Stuffy at yahoo.com. That's not a real email, so, well, I mean, I'm sure it is, it's just not mine, so if you guys email it, good luck. Um, and then username, we're just gonna make it stuffy, okay? Username stuffy, and then the primary key is already set for us, so we can go ahead and close that out. Okay, so now we went ahead and inserted those. Now, the one thing you notice I'm putting these semicolon here, that ends, that makes it, that's the end of the SQL command, and then it goes to the next. So every time these does do this, they're separate. So keep that in mind, this is separate from this, this is separate from that, okay? So now we need to insert into uh, passwords and we wanna say values, all right? And we only need to insert the ID, which is one, because we only have one user. And then from here, you wanna put the password and we'll just put password is stuffies a hacker and there's your password. Now. For those of you that know SQL pretty well, you'll understand that this isn't perfect because there's ways around this. There is no constraint that makes this, make sure they equal the same or they're not null and stuff. That's beyond the scope of this, um, but this will work for your basic uh, login. So let me show you. So we hit build schema, schema is ready. So this is built, okay? Now watch what happens when I say over here, this is where I'm running my actual command. So now if I had a program and I have that program set up, this is the command the program would reach out and run this to, and then you would compare the username and password to what they typed in. Does it match? If it does, perfect. So select, and we're gonna say username because that's the, right here you can see, I'll highlight it for you. Right there's the username, that's what we want. I don't care about their first name and last name right now, that's just information for whatever else I need it for. So select username from, and then the table, which is users, okay, so from users, and then I'm gonna say where ID equals one. Now you could say, for instance, if you don't know the ID from user or where user equals and then whatever they type, right? And then you could pull their um, password. So for instance, I could say select username from users where user equals and then, in, and then have my program insert whatever it is they type. Okay, and then from here, we can say select, whoops, user pass. Come on. So the actual thing is user pass is the actual variable. Okay, so we're gonna select user pass from passwords. And then we're gonna say where ID equals one. Now, what this will do is this will actually give us if we run it here, you'll see it. It gives us username and user password. So username is Stuffy, user password, Stuffy's a hacker. Now what you would do is you would actually create a SQL statement like this that says select username from user where user equals whatever they put, whether it's Stuffy or whatever. So if I type in on a user login, it's my, I type in Stuffy is my username and then I type in Stuffy's a hacker is my password then you'd go, you'd have your program reach out to the database and run this statement and say, does the username equal Stuffy? And then does the password equal Stuffy's a hacker? And then from there, it would verify those two match. And when it does that, you know they're good to go and they can go log in. Otherwise you give them a invalid credentials. So hopefully that was 
fairly basic, guys. That's a pretty easy SQL command um, that you guys can run. Easy database to build to start out learning how to connect databases to your programs and get them running. So that's under 10 minutes. Thank you, guys, and I hope you guys have a great one.